Military life is known for its brutality and extreme boredom. There's an interesting phenomenon right now, and that's a campaign or some sort of debate out there to raise the American public's awareness to suicide in the U.S. military. Suicide in the military is nothing new. Uh, some people, I would probably say most reasonably mentally healthy people, don't usually adapt immediately to military life, and it can be extremely depressing and repetitive and give one a feeling of hopelessness. You're being taught to be a killing machine, after all. Um, the French Foreign Legion was particularly prone to this sort of thing, because, well, what happens to people when you pen them up in uh, a small fort in the middle of the desert and you expect them to do nothing except for just wait for someone to attack you and you may end up waiting for that to happen for several months, several years. In the meantime all you do is you march back and forth and have pointless exercises. They have a term for that in uh, that kind of madness that strikes people in the Foreign Legion, de Le Cafard, the Black Beetle. Uh, he has the cafard, he's got the beetle, it means he's gone crazy. This is all driven him mad. The despair got to him. So, of course, that's why militaries have bands to cheer people up, to cheer up the soldiers, to whip up their morale, especially when they know that they're going to go into battle tomorrow. You don't want your soldiers depressed all the time because it's seriously going to affect military discipline. The same thing is true um, in the old days of sailing ships. Um, all this stuff uh, that's come down to our culture with sea shanties, jolly jack tars, singing, uh, singing and playing fiddles on board the ships. Any decent captain understood the fact that um, if he didn't do something to try and combat the boredom and resultant melancholia of people being cooped up in a very confined space, literally in the middle of nowhere, i.e. on a ship out to sea, um, he may end up having to cut down half of his crew after they'd hung themselves from the uh, rafters inside the ship. Depression and melancholia were genuine concerns for people um, trying to run sailing ships, not just in the Navy, but whalers and traders and East Indiamen and all that sort of thing. So you would deliberately um, get the men to sing and to dance on board and to jump around. They'd get exercise, uh, they'd listen to music, which would raise their spirits. Um, there are small ways and intelligent ways to deal with low-level or at least symptomatic depression. In other words, the type that isn't caused by uh, some actual physiological um, problem or some actual trauma. Just the kind of thing that you get blue about. Um, or one could even say that it, it does in certain cases apply to trauma because people have said that the original American musical genre, the blues, was how African Americans got their feelings out about what their, uh, how lousy their existence was as sharecroppers or slaves uh, who basically lived as human sh chattel for most of their lives. So they decided they were going to sing or they would um, lose their minds in funk and boredom, uh, mostly just hopeless depression. Um, G.K. Chesterton uh, once said, um, the great gales of Ireland are the men that God made mad, for all their fights are merry and all their songs are sad, or something like that. And that's the same thing. Uh, the Irish sad song is meant to ramp up your um, healthy sad emotions, like the type that'll make you start crying or feel wistful about the old days. There are healthy ways to express negative emotions. The problem is, that sort of tendency of using small things over a long period of time to improve one's move, mood can work the other way. You can actually, over, small, uh, over a long period of time, inject small doses of negativity into someone's mind and bring their mood down. That's generally just called unhealthy thinking, unhealthy emotions. That's why I talk about antinatalism in the context of depression. I definitely would put antinatalism in the category of a downer type philosophy. It tells you that not only do you have every right to be depressed, 
But there's a lot to be depressed about, and the most rational thing to do is to remain depressed. To be a sailor who refuses to uh, dance that jig, and uh, or the uh, foreign legionnaire who refuses to enjoy um, a song with his mates when they're out marching across the sand dunes. The point doesn't seem to be to improve one's mood. The point seems to be to deliberately subvert it. Well, again, I'm not going to interfere in anyone's uh, right to do that, but I'll tell you, <laughs> not only is it not healthy to do that, it's um, not very sane either. Thank you.